Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. In 2017, NASA introduced a moon exploration program known as the Artemis. NASA used a partially reusable crewed spacecraft named Orion, which consists of a crew module space capsule designed by Lockheed Martin and a European service module manufactured by Airbus. Moving Orion spacecraft to and from a launch facility is a hectic task, requiring a specialized plane known as NASA's Super Guppy. It's a wide-body cargo plane specifically designed to carry large space modules. In the past, it has been used to transport SIVB, or the third stage of the Saturn V rocket, as well as the command module for the Columbia. One of the most interesting things about the Super Guppy is how its cargo bay opens. The front of the aircraft, which is bulbous by design, pulls forward to reveal a massive cargo area capable of carrying up to 60,000 pounds of cargo. Artemis 1 was the flight test to launch the uncrewed Orion spacecraft around the moon before the Artemis 2 mission with astronauts aboard. On November 16, 2022, Artemis 1 was launched on the Block 1 variant of the Space Launch System, or SLS, with the highest payload and liftoff thrust of any rocket currently in operation. After reaching the Earth orbit, the upper portion carrying the Orion spacecraft separated and later released Orion and deployed 10 CubeSat satellites. On November 21st, Orion completed one flyby of the moon, entered a distant retrograde orbit for six days, and completed another flyby of the moon before returning to Earth. The spacecraft re-entered the Earth's atmosphere with the protection of its heat shield and splashed down in the Pacific Ocean. Now, NASA's landing and recovery team worked alongside the Department of Defense to recover the Orion spacecraft. The preparations began on the deck of the USS Portland, ahead of the splashdown of the Orion. The astronauts released a weather balloon from the deck, which carried instruments to the stratosphere and sent back information on the atmospheric pressure, humidity, temperature, and wind speed. These factors were very important for NASA in predicting the nature of the Orion's splashdown in the Pacific Ocean. Like other capsules, Orion deployed a series of parachutes to counter the immense speed after re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Once splashdown occurred, flotation devices are deployed to keep the capsule afloat in the ocean. The USS Portland, a San Antonio-class amphibious transport dock ship, rushed in to recover the spacecraft. The crew tracked the Orion in the ocean and used fast boats and ropes to guide it into the well deck of the USS Portland. Before the actual launch, the U.S. Navy and NASA collaborated to perfect their techniques for recovering the astronauts and the spacecraft from the ocean. A similar exercise, Underway Recovery Test, or URT-11, was conducted in February 2024 
to prepare for the recovery of spacecraft during the Artemis II mission. Previously, the crew only practiced recovering the uncrewed spacecraft, whereas URT-11 specifically focused on the recovery of astronauts after the splashdown. Once the astronauts splash down, the Navy divers open the hatch to help them exit the spacecraft. The astronauts are then picked up via helicopter and flown back to the recovery ship. The teams then shifted their focus towards recovering the spacecraft, using a series of lines and slowly towing it back inside the ship. Higher operation involved just in getting that capsule out of the ocean. It's an extremely complex process that's been under development for, I think, over 10 years now. Preparations for the launch of the Artemis II are underway. However, it will not launch earlier than September 2025. On October 18th, 2023, NASA and the Air Force Research Laboratory worked towards developing an appropriate seat and a suit for the next Orion mission at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The tests focused on how the human body reacts under quick acceleration, simulating the event of a spacecraft landing in the water. What number did you go with? 14. Testing was conducted with U.S. Air Force volunteers, who met specific height and weight requirements. The scientists tested several scenarios and received feedback from the participants on the suit fit, comfort, and seat integration during impact events. This data will help scientists develop safer and better seats and suits in the future. Since the very first space exploration program, NASA has put a lot of emphasis on the proper training of astronauts. Unlike space shuttles, capsules cannot land with their own power, which is why simulating a water landing under various conditions is very important. The most critical and dangerous part of preparation is water survival training at Fairchild Air Force Base in Washington. This particular simulation is for crash landing in water, which covers egress procedures, hoist operations, and even raft survival. The crew on the sidelines simulates waves using hoses, whereas lights, smoke, and fans simulate winds and other challenges that the astronauts might face after landing in the water. Moreover, a dummy vessel is used to train astronauts to get out of the sinking vessel and onto the life rafts. The most important factor in such a situation is teamwork, especially when it comes to recovering fellow astronauts. The U.S. Air Force works closely with other space agencies like SpaceX. The flight crews are always on standby to rescue astronauts stranded somewhere in the ocean. In such an event, 
the U.S. Air Force airdrops a team of pararescuemen along with their rescue equipment. The crews are ready at a moment's notice to board either the pre-equipped C-17 or rescue helicopters and perform rescue operations to extract and transport the astronauts to the nearest medical facility. The Department of Defense, or DOD, has its own human-rated centrifuge designed to be agile and adaptable for any customer. Recently, NASA reached out to the Air Force Research Laboratory, or AFRL, to ask about the availability of the centrifuge to train their astronauts. Breathe, push out with the abs, good. Breathe, hold it. Engineers from both teams began working to transform the centrifuge, commonly used for fast jet pilot training, into a system for astronaut testing. NASA designed its own cockpit displays that integrated with their centrifuge very efficiently. You see, the pilots flying in an aircraft experience G-forces through the top of the head. However, the astronauts experience the G-forces on the chest. While experiencing G-forces on the chest, the astronauts still have to be able to reach forward and accomplish tasks. These tasks were all part of this testing, and each astronaut had to accomplish them as a centrifuge spun. Additionally, the AFRL has Research Altitude Chambers, or RAC, a family of four computer-controlled altitude chambers where researchers perform various studies. The astronauts, wearing spacesuits, are kept in these chambers along with their equipment to ensure the durability of flight equipment and determine the effects altitude has on the human body. The data obtained from these chambers are used in developing new and improved equipment and suits for future space exploration missions. NASA conducts airborne campaigns using ER-2 aircraft. It is a variant of the U-2 reconnaissance aircraft with a single seat, long and narrow wings, and an elongated fuselage. The ER-2 is capable of flying at altitudes of up to 70,000 feet, which allows it to collect data in the upper regions of the Earth's atmosphere. Moreover, it is employed for high-altitude mapping missions. Due to its ability to fly at extreme altitudes, the ER-2 can capture detailed imagery with high spatial resolution. The data gathered from NASA's ER-2 can be used for firefighting efforts and mapping wildfires. ER-2 uses Jet Propulsion Laboratory's Avaris or Airborne Visible Infrared Imaging Spectrometer instrument to monitor wildfires. On December 17, 2017, a NASA pilot flew an ER-2 aircraft to monitor Southern California wildfires. The pilot flew at high altitudes to collect spectral data using the Avaris, including information about fire-affected areas, vegetation health, smoke plumes, and other parameters. This data was then analyzed by scientists and researchers to support the ongoing firefighting efforts. 
the collaboration between NASA and the U.S. military to recover capsules, along with the training of astronauts, highlights the importance of teamwork and preparation in space exploration. These efforts ensure the safety and success of future missions beyond Earth's atmosphere. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.